Hey everybody, it's your girl Claudia Jordan, and we are back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. Now sit back, relax, and get ready to sip on this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? What's going on, Claudia? What's today? Thursday? <laughs> I, I think so. I, I, I don't know anymore because I I'm I'm on no sleep. And of course, please welcome Armand Wiggins. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Claudia? How are you? I'm good. Look at all the colors tonight. I'm loving the color. I'm loving the color. Okay. Okay. What, what team is that? San Diego Chargers? Weren't they like blue and blue and yellow? Right. San Diego okay. Chargers. Yep, you're right. Okay. Oh, y'all feeling tonight? How y'all doing? Were you drinking? What we doing? I'm definitely drinking. Um, I had a great day, Claudia. You know, I went to the Essence um, 17th Annual Black Women in Hollywood luncheon today. And you know, you were there last year, lighting up the carpet. We missed you this year. But the women, the Black beautiful women lit that carpet up. And so it just, it put a high in me. So I'm still on that high and I can't wait to share that moment with our soulmates soon. Oh, good. Now that's a great thing to go to. Mm -hmm. Lots of fun. All right, great, great. How was your day today, Amon? It was fantastic. Okay, I'm over here sipping too, okay? Because we love a good day. I'm feeling real good today. Yeah, okay. Good. Yeah. I'm going out to Michael Blackson's comedy show tonight. Him and his girlfriend, fiance, Ryder in town. So we're going to, I'm going to save my liquor for then. But I'm sure y'all have enough liquor between the two y'all for our show tonight. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, y'all. People saying Kimora Lee Simmons is shading her ex-husband, Russell Simmons, after she posted an IG story that said, what is this I'm seeing in the news today? LOL. Y'all some wild boys for real, for real. But then she posted, not by my bed, LOL. Many people caught on to her dissing Russell Simmons, who posted about Usher visiting him and sitting by his bed when he woke up. Now, what do you think about this shady post? And do you think Kimora will ever do a tell-all on Russell Simmons? I'll go ahead. Hey, you know it. Listen, Russell and Kimora were together for you know, more than 20 years, but married for 20 years. And is it me or does it seem like Kamora just can't wait to let a cat, some cat, I don't know whose cat, out the bag. She always insinuates on stuff as it relates to Russell, as it relates to Diddy, as it relates to, you know, L.A. Reid and Leona Cohen. It's just like, I can't wait till her tell-all book comes out because that woman right there, she knows where the bones are buried in all of them. Now, this is the interesting part, though. She, poor Russia caught her straight with this, and I'm wondering what she really meant by that, not by my bed. What do you think, Armand? I don't know. I just feel like, listen, can we find out for once and for all if Usher is gay or not so I can figure out if I can shoot my shot? Because, I mean, Jesus, everybody wants to know, is Usher gay? I mean, at least I want to know, because it seems like that is the going thing in Hollywood. All the women feel like Usher's gay, and all the men seem to love Usher around. So I'm trying to figure out, is one plus one equaling two here? And if so, invite me to the party, just <laughs> not the Diddy party. <laughs> so wait a minute. Are you saying gay, or he could possibly be bisexual? He's married. He just recently married a woman. Well, according I don't to know if gay Palmer, would be. I don't know if gay Palmer, would be how he identifies. Oh, uh, well, well, apparently, well, maybe not. But if you ask women, you sleep with a man, you're gay. Whether you're bisexual or not, gay is gay to them. So I would just say, you know, maybe we'll, we'll go bisexual for you, Al. But gay for me. <laughs> not for me. <laughs> 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 well, let's we, ask the let's we ask would, the we resident wouldn't, We wouldn't want to offend the bisexual community tonight. Uh, let, let's let's <laughs> ask our resident heterosexual female. Okay. What would you like to know? Uh, is so a is man a that sleeps with with, with yeah. men or women considered gay or bisexual? Or are you gay? We would think so. Yes. You would think he's gay. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we have some comments here for fun. That I need Kimora to tell us a tea. Leah said. She knows something we don't. Uh, Melina Salam said, Kamora's ready to talk. She is ready. Rosemary Watson said she should let it go. Uh, and Lady T, and I agree with this, Kamora is not that stupid. She saw what happened to Kim Porter. Mm. Mm. You know, that was one of her best friends, and I think she definitely wants justice for Kim Porter, and I think she she would be definitely here for the empire coming tumbling down. Not that that's an Usher thing or a Russell Simmons thing, but she definitely knows a lot. And and I see people like always kind of pressing certain women that they know may know some stuff. I, you know, we see it all the time here. Say something, asking about things that 
If y'all heard the rumors already about people disappearing and how some people's deaths are under invest well need to be under investigation, should we be so pushy for them to come out and tell us what we we that could probably endanger their lives? Like there's a lot of secrets that these guys do not want out, and there's a lot of powerful men that can actually make things happen. Cassie told us all about it. You know what I'm saying? So I think some people give us as many, they put a little breadcrumb out there and give us as much as they can tell us. And it's us up to us to kind of like kind of connect the dots. But she knows that she can't say so much. She doesn't say but so much. She got Diddy and Russell that she been kind of speaking on. Mm. So but when is a good time? So like if you think about it, when does the Kamora Lee speak out? Like, you know, Ru Russell's what, 65, 69? Oh, wait, like, does he have to die first? Or, like, how does that work? When do you think is a good time for her to say something? Or does she keep gaslighting? I don't even know if it's gaslighting. I think she's dropping hints as much as she can. Um, I think when other people come out and you feel safe, like, okay, for example, anyone that's been for real in the business and been around those people, been hearing about the DDT, the, the, none of that, a lot of that stuff was not new to us, right? Uh, we hadn't heard it, but no one wanted to be the first one to kick that door open. It takes a lot of bravery, bravery or stupidity. Right? Mm. Or lots of backup. Once Cassie was brave enough to do that, look how many people came out afterwards. Mm -hmm. Those didn't just happen. Those are people that have been holding on to out of fear, but they saw, okay, and there's safety in numbers. Let's all say something. I bet you if more people start coming out and, and saying these things, then you know, you'll get more people feeling safe. Because if you're close to power like that, you've seen some things happen, y'all. Mm -hmm. People disappear, cars get blown up, people have going to comas, people get drugged, they have anorexia, all that stuff happens. And if you think it's all from natural causes, I'm sorry to tell you, it's not. It's not. Uh, T. Thomas said, people said Prince, but we was, uh, but we really didn't know. So Usher isn't gay in my book unless he says it himself. Lady mm. T said, as far as Cassie goes, when she cashes her check from Diddy, she needs to take her children, her husband, and disappear. <laughs> and I'm telling you, Hollywood board, it was scary. I live in Texas. Kanye West is now rebranding his school, Donda Academy, that was shut down after multiple lawsuits stemming from poor academics and unsafe working conditions. He has now changed the name to Donda Ray Academy and moved it to the San Fernando Valley inside a warehouse. His prior school wasn't accredited. Do you think Donda Ray Academy will have a change, a chance of succeeding, Armand? Uh, Kanye's my guy, but no, I think a little bit of this is performative. I don't really think he, they're really learning much there. And I think it'll have the same results. I don't really think Kanye West, and, and I'm a Gemini, but the focus isn't really there for the schools. I think he just does stuff because he has power and he likes to try to speak truth to power. However, this is one of those things that's just a little bit ob obnoxious, in my opinion. And I think that it's a waste of time and resources. So I don't think this will last. Okay. Al, what do you thought? Yeah, hoping? you know what it is? I think it's the toying with children's education mm -hmm. and it's toying using you know his need and desire to be in the media or to mm -hmm. be in that spotlight everybody know not only is it not accredited but the curriculum is not recognized by the city by the county or by the state so what are these parents actually doing by re-enrolling their students in this type of school like what are they actually getting out of it and for me it sounds like they want proximity to his celebrity and i don't think that's fair to the kids now like if they have a talented kid that's in music or something maybe they can go to an after school program there or you know, try to work a relationship with Kanye that way. But putting your kids in a full curriculum just to be celebrity adjacent to me is abuse of a parenthood on a child. What would make you think in your in your world as a parent that Kanye West is the person I think of when I think of education? He's right. good at marketing. He's good at the music stuff. But when have we ever known him to be like a scholar, an academic? And then the fact that the school is being locked down because of closed because of low grades, he showed you already that's not his priority. It's a thing. It's like it's like when the mean girls do the women's empowerment brunch. You know what I'm saying? Like, we know it's bullshit. It's a good look. Oh, women's empowerment, but you all hate that's each other. It's word. true. You, we all know the woman that everyone hates was a, a mean girl or a bitch. Post the women's empowerment, and it's like, All oh, right. it's so good for the. It's fake, y'all. <laughs> it's fake, and we can probably name up a few people. I don't think we all can think of something like, yep, yep, oh, yeah, that one too. Like it is fake. It's it's Kanye is got getting so far away from what made him great, his talent, 
and it's become gimmick. All we talk about is his wife with a pussy, a coochie out. Mm. Talk about him with his wide butt on a boat and his thing sucked. <laughs> like, mm. when's the last time we talked about a bomb song by Kanye West? Right. You know, or a, a line that didn't look like, you know, it came off a of skid row. Uh, okay. And, not, and they said it better. it's better than kids not going to school at all. Uh, I'd rather them go to public mm -hmm. school. Yeah. And JW said these parents are all clout chasing. Yeah, like Al yes. said. And uh, Ansel D'Angelo said, ain't no good parent in their right mind sending their school to Kanye West warehouse school. <laughs> and them kids look like they're in a cult by Kanye. That's what Liberty's mom said. I agree. Like his own kids don't even go to the school. Good point. What are you learning in the school? <laughs> what are you learning? Seriously. What are you learning? Fashion? I don't know. And silence fell over the land. <laughs> All right. Ali Lottie, the ex-girlfriend of rapper Juice World, who passed away in 2019 after an accidental drug overdose is coming under fire. She reportedly posted their sex tape to her OnlyFans account months ago. And now she is selling his designer clothes for, on the platform. Is inflation that bad that she's got to do all this? Or do you think she sees it as an easy way to come up? Um, Armand, what do you think? Um, well, this just basically will show you she never loved a guy. You know what I mean? Whether, you know, you needed the money or not, there's just certain things you wouldn't do. So exploiting your sexual activities for OnlyFans and then selling some of his perishables, it's just crazy. I mean, you at least keep something um, sacred to your to your heart if you actually really care. But, you know, a lot of people, are, they don't really care because they feel as though, listen, he went and got himself a nice porcelain snow bunny, so why should they feel a way that now you've, you've died and now she's selling everything, your dick and your clothing? Dang. Yeah. Um, you know what? The, the, am I the only one that's grossed out by the fact that he's not alive and you're out here selling... Mm. a sex tape between you and a guy that's no longer alive. Like, to me, that just is very disturbing, and it, mm -hmm. it has it's got this feel of demonic to it. And it also screams thirsty, broke, and opportunistic. And yeah, I said it, because that's exactly how it speaks to me. And like Armand said, look, she doesn't look like any of us. Look at all the other Black rappers who were with Black females. You didn't see them doing this. You didn't see Young Dolph's girlfriend doing this. You didn't see King Vaughn's girlfriend doing this. And you didn't see PNB Black's girlfriend doing this. So I think it speaks to the opportunistic behavior of certain people and certain certain races of people, if you ask me. I think it's inappropriate. And in all fairness, the family should try to have it taken down or repossessed as it relates to the clothes. Uh, Lauren London would never. That's right. a happy woman. You know, Armour Rosen did this when Michael Clark Duncan died. Really? Right away, he had an estate sale and the family wanted things from his estate. They were like, please let us have some cologne or watch. He's like, nope. Had the estate sale and sold all this stuff out. And I thought that was really tacky. You know, I don't rock with her. And that's, uh, that's sad to hear. It, it is because, you know, like the family wanted like something to remind them of her. And this isn't alleged. This is what I know. The family has reached out to me and told me this. Um, I think this is tacky. It makes me question, did you ever love the person? That goes for both of them, actually. Um, you know, like, what are you doing? But it seems that this woman, from what I've looked up about her, major drug problem. They were both on camera, what, doing drugs, doing perk 30s and cocaine. So this oh. this screams someone that has a chemical dependency on drugs. Mm. Uh, and, you know, she's making the, she's making crackhead decisions, like, ish. Mm. Not saying she's a crackhead, but she's making, you know, um, those kind of moves that someone that needs money for a fix, allegedly, uh, would do. You know, because that's not something that, in your right mind, if I'm mourning the death of my man that I loved, I'm not going to be in a rush to put his stuff on Poshmark, okay? I'm not doing it. Like, I'm going to be like, no, I'm going to hold on to everything. And the sex tape is extremely cringe. Extremely of a dead man. Come on, I, I called him PNB. I mean, I called it PB Rock. It's P and B Rock, y'all. Sorry. That's that old man thing. See, I'm on that. So I would have knew that. You don't know who PB Rock is? <laughs> no, I said PB Rock. I, I heard myself say PB Rock. You know, sometimes I'm like, oh. Anyway. You don't have a learning disability, but that's another time. Oh, the old learning disability. Oh, I want to. Uh, Yannick Jacob says, where's his mama? She needs to snatch her up. And SZA Remen said, uh, if she really wanted the coin, she should go, uh, she should hold on to it for at least a decade and then cash in. And Sheenie Beanie said, it's very broke behavior. Mm. And Coco Antoinette said, where's the family? Why does she have all of his things? I believe they live together and that's why she had access to it. So, right. 
Thanksgiving addict vibes, allegedly. Coming up, find out what Bambi lied to Lil Scrappy about, and later Natalie Nunn gets caught sneaking around on her husband. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome our special guest host, T.S. Madison. Hey, y'all. Hey, soulmates. Y'all still my friends? T.G.I.F. <laughs> you make me giggle like a schoolgirl. Live and interactive. Ooh. Y'all been flirting all week, and it has not gone unnoticed by the soulmates. So might there be a little carryover after this a little situation? On Fox Soul. I will go visit Al wherever he is. He can take me out to dinner, and he can pay for my babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to Tea and GIF. Let me do a quick little cleanup. Uh, when we talked about Kamara Lee spilling the tea, I wasn't implying that for sure Russell or Diddy would, in fact, hurt her. Um, I'm sure they wouldn't be happy about what she said, and they would um, take her off their Christmas card list, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Lil Scrappy went on IG Live with his mother, Mama D, and revealed that his ex-wife Bambi lied about her real age. He claims he found out on their third anniversary. Take a look. When I found out who Shouter really was, I just stayed quiet. I, I shared my tears because I was like, dang, I ain't know that really exists that people lie about who they are. I ain't know that I ain't know that really exists. I thought that was like and marry people and, and that's like I seen that on movies, mama. How would you feel if you were deceived like this by your spouse about their age? All right, Al, would you, what do you think about this? Oh, come on, Scrappy. Now, Scrappy, you my dude now, but come on, man. I think you're just doing it. Okay, you got to be doing it just for television, just for, you know, ratings or something. Because, A, you're a grown-ass man. Not only did you marry her, and to get a marriage certificate, everybody has to put their date of birth on the marriage certificate. That's A, so you should have seen it then. And then after you laid down with her and created all those babies, you should have seen their birth certificates. You had kids with her, and so the date of births are on the birth certificates. So this is all cap, if you ask me, or you simply aren't paying attention. And you being run game on, son. Which one is it? Because I refuse to believe that you didn't see your marriage certificate and you didn't see the kids that you created with her birth certificates to not know what her real age is. Uh, T. Thomas said all women lie about their age. Armand, what do you think about this? I was going to say, I feel like he's being a little bit dramatic because at some point, like, what, she's only like three or four years older than him, maybe five at max. And I just feel three. like perhaps... I feel like all, most women will lie about their age and probably she probably did it because, you know, women being perceived older, sometimes not looked at as desirable. So perhaps he would have yeah. judged her because she she was older than him. And so if he didn't know how old she was, then he still was able to, you know, like her the same. Sometimes when you know how old a person is, you become uninterested. So she probably was trying to protect herself 
and um, give herself a fair shot at the relationship. And so I think he's been a little bit dramatic right now. Now, y'all know I always got a story for everything because I, <laughs> at my 50 years old, I've lived a life. I had a guy that lived with me and he lied about his age and his real name. And one day he left his uh, wallet on my couch and I opened it up and his age, but he was like a struggle rapper. So he thought it would help him if people thought he was like seven years younger. And um, he got mad at me and told me, I can't be with someone I can't trust. You looked at my wallet. I was like, you created a whole you struggle rapper. Anyways, I just kind of find it funny. I can't, I can't believe that people nowadays do not look at their person who they procreate with, person that they marry and person that they move into their house license. Yeah, that's I, Yeah. Are you serious? Unless the person goes out of their way to really hide it. Like, I, I've seen it, you know what I mean? Like, but I, I don't see, yeah, they got married. They do have to- No passport, no driver's yeah. license. Nah, I'm sorry. If, if you're moving into this house right here where I live, if I'm marrying you and if I'm having a kid with you, I'm definitely going to see your birth certificate, your license or something. It has to happen. And listen, women nowadays, y'all are such detectives. This blows my mind that you guys wouldn't figure this out from guys that you're dating like i know women that are like they run they run background checks before they even go on the first date ah but some of these con men are good coco internet says my ex lied to me about his age i was 23 he told me he was 25 come to find out he's really 31 that's creepy uh even steven says all women lie about their age but not to their husband and lady t said damn scrappy how much lean was you sipping on you didn't know how old that woman was <laughs> and that's coco, a good one. Coco Antoinette said, I never lie about my age. To me, it's a big flex when you look younger than you actually are. Yeah. Arnold Norfleet, was he older or younger than you, Claudia? He was younger than me by a couple of years, but I actually was more comfortable with him being the older age, like his real age, but he wanted to be a rapper. And since then, like a lot of the artists that are on some of these reality shows, a song has never come out. Well, you know, those people that are always in the stew, but nothing comes out anyways, mm. whatever. Seems like someone took the mannequin challenge a little too seriously, Alicia Framis who once dated a mannequin, is making headlines again. This time, she is scheduled to marry her fiancé, who was a hologram, this summer. His name is Alex, spells AI for Artificial Intelligence Lex. Do you think she will have a successful marriage, or will it end up in divorce, Al? Oh, this this is the craziest mess I've ever seen in my life. I, 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 what am I supposed to say? This is great. Oh, this is awesome. This is cool. This is refreshing. This is interesting. Get out of here with this mess. You're talking to yourself. This is basically having an imaginary friend. So maybe if it works for her, it makes her happy, and she's going to live happily ever after, skip on down and through those daisy lands with your daggone imaginary friend and your, what do you call that hologram, baby? It's all yours. Come on. What do you I think? think this is so new now, next, and progressive. <laughs> no, I knew you would. I knew we knew Armand no, would like no, this. No, no, listen. I'm here for it. Listen, live in your truth, baby. It personally doesn't work for me because I need to. I'm very affectionate. I need some kisses, some touching, some rubbing, some hugging. Like you don't get any of that. But listen, there are people that live by themselves. There are people that will be by themselves for the rest of their lives. You know, this is like having cats. You know what I mean? But you have your own <laughs> Hold up, not too much on cats. Not oh, too much like... on cats. Not too much on cats. Oh, tell me about you have cats. <laughs> well, you know, you get what I'm saying. Just kind of having a house full of pets and no one else there. That's what I'm saying. But this is like that a form of that now. But now you can have like a makeshift boyfriend. I'm here for it. If it makes her happy, Listen, but hey, it's man, not, you, there's nothing that she can touch. It's, it's like crazy. A, it's that's the part now. If it was a blow up doll, if it was like a you know, uh, uh, what can we give? Her? I don't even know what else we can make it, but like a rag doll or something, you know, like a cabbage patch kid, even <laughs> name a cabbage patch kid and tote it around like your boyfriend. But a hologram, you can't even touch it, you can't kiss it. You can't I mean there's no there's no mutual nothing. Uh uh, this is does this it talk, crazy. It doesn't to even me. Talk, does it talk to you? Yeah, I think it does. You know, oh. this is why I said the other night how sick I am of the world. Like, the shit is just weird. Like, it's just constant weirdness, marrying plastic dolls, holograms. <laughs> I mean, what is next? Marrying a car, making love to a toaster. Like, everyone's just on some weird stuff. I want us to get back to, like, normality. 
I don't know. Date somebody. It's gonna be it's gonna be one day that thing lock her in the bathroom and strangle her. Then the world's gonna be gagging. <laughs> Whispered I mean? in her ear and told her to jump out the window. <laughs> yeah. Why she sleep? <laughs> my husband told my hologram told me to go rob the neighbors. <laughs> Jesus behavior said, "What in the eye robot is going on here?" Rajan Alexander said, "Ain't that much loneliness in the world?" And B Bay said, "Healthy delusion." Imprisoned persons should have access to hologram belo uh, belonging. And I said, child, the way dating is these days, I'm about to build me a man hell. <laughs> oh, and Bambi 310 said, Claudia, the cat lady. It's only two. You're a cat lady when you get the four, not two. two is oh, long. is that what they say? Mm. They be trying to cut. They be trying to. Two is How long. How many cats you got? I have two, sir. Oh, two is I will have you know. Exactly. And they, they run that them. house, baby. They do. Walk they in do. that house. Like, 18 and 8, 7. You? Yeah, 18 and 8, yes. All right. A doctor recently told a patient not to shave or wax her vagina to let it grow out, the hair grow out. But it gets worse. Take a look. And if you do have hair and your boyfriend doesn't like it, ask him if he wants to make love to a baby because. <laughs> That's what it's like. <laughs> All right. Well, the doctor's pedophilia comments inappropriate. Oh, was she just trying to make a joke out? I'm going to give this doctor a pass and say that she was trying to make a joke, but it just didn't land right. But either way, it was inappropriate, right? <laughs> I think she should have stayed to the science of why you shouldn't cut your hair or take it down to ball. But, you know, don't try to do those type of analogies and definitely not with a woman of color. Okay, Armand. Yeah, I don't think she was. I don't think she was trying to be. You know, like I don't know. I I, I don't think she meant much by it. I think she was trying to be funny, but I think the joke didn't land. However, um, I feel like you should shave. Okay, and I feel like you know bald. Uh, well, I'm not a woman. I don't have that, and so I don't know. But I I know you you should shave a little bit. Maybe not bald. I don't know. But you know, I like my bald on some bussy here and there. Ooh. <laughs> You like what? What? You like what? But listen, no more drinking. Wait, wait. Are you talking about your bussy? Oh, oh. What? You can you can make it bald. Why not have it bald? So you shave, you wax, or shave your taint? Is that what you're saying? Your booty crack? Hair and every. It just depends on the occasion. Okay. Yeah, I feel like there's levels to it. So. Some it's it's a seasonal thing, you know what I mean. Some mm. you might want to be a little furry. Some you might want to be smooth. Mm. Mm hmm. Okay. I, think I that's mean, okay. I will say. I mean, I I did laser years ago, and I I like how it feels. I actually makes to me it makes sex enjoyable. But it did in the beginning. If you think about it, it is kind of weird because it is that's what you are looking like before you go through puberty. So I get I get what the doctor was saying. She was making a joke that used to be okay to say a few years ago before we became so woke. Vision uh, deflector sign said people are so dramatic. She's not being weird. Uh, Beryl Robinson said I had an emergency room tell me that uh, before to never shave. And um, Sunny Levin said that doctor lost her damn mind. Oh, Christina R said I have a full bush. Don't judge me. Yeah. Uh Al, you sometimes play with the ladies, I believe. So, yeah. um, do you like? How do you feel about it? if you get get ready to go down uh, on your lady friends? Uh, uh, no. at full bush. Are you 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 going for it or what? No, I have a brother who loves a full bush. Like that's one of his fetish, and it turns him on. For me, mm, a full bush is like a lot because as long as they keep it clean, there's not a whole bunch of smell in there. Like I could get with it, but I like to I like it kind of a little trimmed trimmed and maybe you know take it all the way down once but let it grow back you know just like for a couple of times because i you know you can see everything i like the fact that you can see everything yeah but i also feel that i hear that hair is also a protective mechanism right it's supposed Man. to stop dirt and germs and all that stuff from entering the vagina everywhere you have hair is supposed to be by for nature i mean that's it does protect it's, it's there for a reason a biological reason but you know we want to be cute and, yeah, and I just don't think it's fair to make somebody feel like if they like their girlfriend to be bald or a woman wants to be bald, you have to equate that to being like, like liking little girls. That's not mm -hmm. probably what that means. Mm -hmm. Maybe I like a smooth area. I, may, maybe some men, if they go down in that area, they don't want hair in their mouth. They don't, there's things that, you know, or maybe like some women, they don't like all that. They like to feel, they feel sexier when it's bald. I think porn is what swayed me to wanting to see it bald. Okay. Well, we're going to 
move on now. Coming up, <laughs> Natalie Nutton gets caught sneaking around on her husband. And later we have an update on the tragedy that went down on the set of Russ. We'll be right back. <laughs> Please welcome our special guest co-host, T.S. Madison. Hey, y'all. Hey, soulmates. Y'all still my friend? T.G.I.F. <laughs> well, you make me giggle like a schoolgirl. Live and interactive. Ooh. Y'all been flirting all week, and it has not gone unnoticed by the soulmates, so might there be a little carryover after this a little situation? On Fox Soul. I will go visit Al wherever he is. He can take me out to dinner, and he can pay for my babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men. Take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love, our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all. Natalie Nunn has gotten herself caught up in a cheating scandal after she admitted to creeping around with Curtis Golden from Bad Boys Club. However, she claimed she was on a break with her husband, Jacob Payne, at the time. A couple of videos were leaked showing Natalie getting real cozy with Curtis. Do you think it's appropriate to sleep with other people when you're on a break from your spouse? Or is it okay? Is a break a break, Armand? You know, Natalie, you know, I love Natalie and I love all of them over there at Zeus, but Natalie went live and she talked about this and she was ranting about it, but she didn't say anything. And I was really trying to ask her, what does that mean to go on a break? So from what I gather from it, she felt like, you know, she was busy and she need, she's she been in a relationship with her husband for over 13 years. And so she needed a break. And, you know, to me, that sounded like I'm the breadwinner now. And this is, this is important, fellas out there. You know, when your woman is the breadwinner, I don't feel like they respect you as much anymore. So then she's on the road. She has all this money. She has this newfound fame. Now she has younger, hotter guys around. And so now all of a sudden she needs a break. And so she's sleeping with a new guy and disguising it as I needed a break. No, I kind of feel like this wasn't a break. You were outside having a hot girl's baddie summer and you got your coins up and your your husband was there with, with the baby and you were bored and you were living your 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 hot mama fantasy. And so I don't know. I don't think this was a break. I think she was doing what the boys do when they have rich, when they have when they have money. All right, Al. Hey, hell, Will and Jada did it, and no one's questioning it. Hell, she took one of her son's best friends, a good friend who used to come over the house and hang out, and snuck him in her bedroom. Oh my God, allegedly. <laughs> well, it's not allegedly. Well, you know, snuck him in the bedroom, allegedly part. So I mean. I'm, I just feel like this. I I, I love Natalie too, I, and, and I, I'm obsessed with with the programming over there. It just seems to get worse and worse and worse and more and more entertaining. Um, and I think it's a timing for me. I think that you know all of this is coming out. I think it's com it's a little bit convenient that it's time. I think this is also a mixture of her behavior that she's probably not doing anymore, but it's making the right timing for a good conversation to promote her all her projects over at Zeus and Zeus. That's how I really feel about it. I think she's probably back with her husband now and they're figuring some stuff out. You know, you know, I'm all about monogamy and all that if I'm in a relationship, but this is one of those conversations where I'm like, 
You know, had this been an NBA player, NFL player, you know what you signed up for. This person's wealthy. They can have anybody that they want. So you know what? She is she's doing she is doing what the people that got their bread have and that the, the, the breadwinners have. And it is a break. It is a break because you are uh, actually on live and stuff like that. Like she's on video doing that. So I think if you were sneaking around, you wouldn't be doing all that. I think you'd be like not probably filming yourself kissing somebody else. To me, that shows she was, hey, she's standing on what I'm doing. I'm, I'm okay with this. I don't have a conversation with my husband. He knows what it is, and that's what it is. So, you know. Uh, I, I think that that was a little irresponsible, though, because she didn't po She didn't want that to come out. She had no idea that was coming out. The guy sent that to a, a former cast member that had got fired, and Stunner Girl ended up putting that information out because he ended up leaking that to her because he wanted to expose the relationship. Apparently... Mm -hmm. According to Natalie Nunn, he was trying to extort her for a Rolex. And because she didn't buy him that, he wanted to leak out their relationship. Right. right. I and understand thing, that. I do know the part about I think, I think Natalie, Natalie uh, Nunn, you're making money right now, sweetheart. You're the breadwinner. You're bringing in quite a bit of cheese. This is evidence that your husband can use if he wants to divorce you and get some money. He can use this to the courts to show your infidelity. So just be very mindful of what you step into and say that you did it. It's so interesting. We talk about this all the time. These young people are out here in these streets giving the cops evidence. This is giving the lawyers evidence to side with the husband when it comes to the divorce. So just think about it moving forward. I do know about the whole stunner girl thing, Armand, about that, that that was the one that put it out. But I, and I get that. But like, there's a difference between someone leaking video of you over here, like kissing someone, as opposed to, like she knew someone was filming that. And I just feel like if I'm married, I don't want my husband to know, I would never be like, you couldn't even get me in those kind of videos. So I'm like, either, I don't know, are we that arrogant or that comfortable? That's what I want to know, you know? Well, but I don't know. And that's when it's dangerous, when you're that right. comfortable. D. Mitch agrees with you, Claudia. D. Mitch says it's fucked up, though, to kiss on a live when on a break. Very irresponsible. But I do agree that if you if you both say you're on a break, this I think a break is a break from the rules of your relationship. I would think that because what's the point of taking a break if you can't talk to other people? That but I guess everyone has their own rules of what a break is. For me, I would say a break because I wanted to be with someone else. I don't mm. know if it was really a break because she was also online saying how her and her husband were going to go to be at the game that night, kissing mm. and hugging, and she was at the game courtside by herself. Mm. Well, Joseph Sav Joseph Savage says I think both dudes are DL quiet as kept. No. So Armand is a DL man gay? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. He's secret. Not bisexual. Listen, Al, he's gay. Okay. Bisexual is still gay. I feel like bisexual is still gay too if you're a man. It's no shame. Just own it. Live in it. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, the two of, well, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The two of you can't disrespect. Now we don't we don't disrespect the trans. We don't disrespect the lesbians. <laughs> we don't disrespect the gays. We have we are a letter in the spectrum. So don't disrespect mine, please. Let's not Where's go down that route tonight. Let's What's not the go down there. Let's just be honest though. Most bisexual men like men more. Like, let's just be real. Oh no! I've never met a bisexual you clear, you man clearly, that like women more. No, no, you you really don't know what bisexuality is all about. Just <laughs> <laughs> um, hilarious. Go? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> There's no winning this right now. Just hilarious. Recently shared her regrets over the joke she made about Chadwick Boseman before she knew he was sick. Uh, before his death in 2020, Chadwick shared a video of himself that revealed his immense weight loss. Just Hilarious assumed he was just losing weight for a film role and made fun of him for the new thin frame. What are your thoughts on this, Al? I really like it. I like the fact that Just Alex Hilarious addressed it. I thought it was honest and I thought it was very vulnerable and I thought it was insightful, especially because she's a comedian and a lot of comedians hide behind being a comedian to be rude, nasty and disrespectful. I, I, I just thought that that this really shows the maturity of her as a comedian. And to be honest, I would like to see comedians stop making fun 
of people and do a better job at storytelling, right? Because you never know what people are going through in life these days. And that's why you're seeing certain people, you know, jump on stage and, and fight people and beat up people, attack people. Who was that comedian that got attacked by the, the father's son because he said that the father and son must be sleeping with each other? You really got to be careful what comes out of your mouth as a comedian these days. Stick to your storytelling, stick to making people laugh, and stop trying to always embarrass somebody with your commentary. So hats are off to Jess Hilarious for understanding that and respecting the boundaries that she crossed. Armand, what do you think? I think I agree with you 100%, Al. I thought that was really big of Jess. I thought it showed growth and maturity, and it showed just because you are a comedian, like, you don't have to hunt, hide under the guise of being a comedian. Some stuff is inappropriate, and some stuff is just not, you know, uh, okay to say, and I think her taking responsibility of that shows a lot of growth, and this is, and because she's such a controversial person and a shock jock, when she does say those shocking things, you know, in the future, people will always be able to revert to some kindness and some accountability that she has taken on her end, so it will lessen the blow of other things that she say in the future, so I, it was really smart to me. I think she was really sorry when she found out that he was sick. And I will say this, comedy has 1,000% changed. I mean, I used to work on a very very famous and successful comedy show. Uh, people, there's an argument to be made that that show was the show, the blueprint for all the, the morning shows, like The Breakfast Club and the podcast that came out afterwards, The, the Fox Show with Jamie Foxx. And we were so edgy and reckless and we'd say anything. It was a different time then. And then we learn as we get older or the longer we're in this business, you know, sometimes you're making fun of someone that uh, you don't really know if they're going through something. I think a lot of people learn to kind of relax a little bit uh, with the jokes with Chadwick. But, you know, on the other hand, comedy is definitely taking a hit because it's it's people are going to have to find a different way to be funny. You right. know, a lot of comedy would come from making fun of people. You see them in the audience. Oh, this person's fat or this one's so skinny or this one's cross-eyed or whatever, not knowing the story behind it. And it's just too risky now because now you'll get canceled. Uh, KP Jones says, how is it mature when she and Charlemagne just had to apologize to Larissa Tisachik? And Lisa Burgess said, Jess does too much. And Lil Lexi said, didn't she just say something about Reese Tisa? And Sports Report said, Jess is a mess. Katie Pop 3 said, glad Jess owned it. And I think she sounded very sincere when she said she looked, she felt bad about the way she thought about herself. And I thought that was deep. Keep it locked because coming up next, we have an update on the tragedy that went down on the set of Russ. And later, Risa Tisa's ex-husband is on the internet defending his ways. Oh, we got to hear from him. We'll be right back. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome our special guest co-host, T.S. Madison. Hey, y'all. Hey, soulmates. Y'all still my friend? T.G.I.F. <laughs> you make me giggle like a schoolgirl. Live and interactive. Y'all been flirting all week, and it has not gone unnoticed by the soulmates, so might there be a little carryover after this a little situation? On Fox Soul. I will go visit Al wherever he is. He can take me out to dinner, and he can pay for my babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had.
Welcome back. All right. I'm sure we all remember that terrible tragedy that took place on the set of Rust when the film cinematographer was killed by a shot from a prop gun held by Alec Baldwin. Well, the 26-year-old uh, armorer on set, Hannah Gutierrez Reed, has been found guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Now she faces up to 18 months in prison for the killing of the cinema cinematographer, Helena Hutchins. Do you think this is a fair verdict, Al? So help me understand, she is head of props, right? Okay, so she's responsible for not checking the gun that included, you know, that would call to discharge. So the, the person who actually used the gun is not charged. Right, because, well, when you're on set and you have a shooting scene, like, uh -huh. the gun is already supposed to have gone through many hands and many checkpoints to make sure there's nothing that's supposed to check the chamber, that was to shoot it, all of that kind of stuff. I've had to work with this before, but with firearms, when you get the gun as an actor, it, it's it's really not on you to have to check it. Um, Got it. There's someone that's paid to actually be there, and they it, it, their only job is to check the props. Their Got only it. job. It's really wow. unfortunate, because I don't think anyone meant for this to happen. I really don't, right. you know? Um, Armand, what but, do you think? The, but they're also saying that, you know, she should be held accountable because she wasn't responsible enough to be on set telling people, hey, you can't play with the guns that way. So if they're horse playing and, you know, roughhousing with guns and pointing them around, she should have been there throughout the whole process saying, hey, we don't do that. Keep the weapon down. This is the way that you do it. So she wasn't really doing her job to its fullest extent, you know, from checking the gun and also making sure that people weren't horse playing around with the weapons in there. So I feel like, you know, 18 months, she should probably get longer because somebody died and people's lives changed forever over her, you know, lousy mistake so How? i do go ahead, huh? go ahead. So go ahead. i believe that I, and here's the thing people can say after this happened it's on the job but i feel like certain jobs certain career paths you know that if you make up if you make a mishap then you're gonna have to pay for it so she she should pay for that she should pay for that with more time in my opinion like robin rich said she didn't check the gun and they said she was using drugs i'm gonna tell you this if i was the actor that shot someone thinking i'm playing around or in a scene and I shot them and killed them. Do you, how can you imagine how traumatizing that would be? Can you imagine like how difficult you it would be for you to like move forward? I would never probably want to act again. Like I would, we would. And then the family of her, like you're you're on a set, a movie set. Like it shouldn't even be any live ammunition in any guns. I don't even understand why it should be a prop gun. You know. I, I also said was, she was on set passing around narcotic narcotics to people. Yeah, she was getting. So her. it's like she was getting high. So. Who the hell hired her? Whose friend was she? T. Thomas said the situation is terrible all around. I'm still baffled at how a live round got in that gun. K.P. Jones said they're saying that she put the bullet in the gun. Wow. It wasn't a, it was, was it a bullet? It was. I thought it was like a... a shell. Uh, Usually like a, a shell. shell. Yeah, I thought it was a shell. I didn't think it was a... It's not a bullet, guys. It was like a shell. It's a discharge, yeah. But those things are really... They can still hurt you. Yeah, um, they can still kill you. <clears throat> Um, yeah, they. I you can get burnt in the face. That that definitely doesn't happen. That definitely happens. Um, okay, let's move on. Uh, Miami has had it with spring breakers tearing up their city every year. They are sick of it. Take a look at this public service announcement that the city put out. Hey, we need to talk. This isn't working anymore. And it's not us. It's you. We just want different things. You just want to get drunk in public and ignore laws. This March. You can expect things like curfews, bag checks, and restricted beach access, DUI checkpoints, $100 parking, and strong police enforcement for drug possession and violence. Do you think this will stop fools from uh, stop people from acting a fool for spring break, Armand? What do you think? Uh, absolutely. The hundred dollar parking is a no for me. I don't want to go <laughs> in the police checkpoints. All right. Definitely stop black people. We don't want to pay for parking and we definitely don't like police. So I feel like, you know, Miami ain't the place to go this spring break. If you're trying to have a good time, that's for sure. All right. Al, what do you think? Well, you know, I kind of have an intimate experience with this. I said, I lived in Miami beach and I said on the board, 
uh, for tourism for spring break because so much was happening so bad. There were deaths. There were record number of deaths with African Americans. There were record number of arrests against African Americans. They were stomping on roofs and crashing windshields. They were burning places. They were vandalizing things. And the question in, in all our town meetings was, what can we do about it? So they started to easily, they thought a curfew would work. Curfew didn't work. They thought raising parking would work. That didn't work. So they start using heavy handed tactics in order to reduce death, crime and arrests for the, you know, the disproportionate number of African Americans. And what would happen is they would be in there for days. So it was really, really kind of bad. So understanding the other side of this, I totally get it because it never stopped. It just kept getting worse. And I sat on those boards in 2011 and we're now 13 years later and the numbers are not doing anything but inflating so they're going to keep trying these tactics until they get those numbers down and to be honest in a way if you guys see the numbers you see the deaths you see the arrests you see the vandalism you see the cost you really do want it to stop because a lot of horrible stuff happens um during spring break and especially when there's a lot huge gathering of african americans on uh, miami beach I have mixed feelings about this. Uh, if I'm a Miami resident, hell yeah, get them yeah. out here. Don't let them come down. Then if I'm a person, the city probably is like likes the money that it brings down. I'm gonna say this: the one thing that's an issue. I wish the people that go to spring break could get it together because that is such a tradition, a part of college. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like going down to Miami for spring break. Only thing that worries me is about this being a slippery slope because you can use these same excuses to start targeting certain events you may not like, like black gathering. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, with Virginia Beach and mm -hmm. and what with black black ski weekend yeah. and what's mm -hmm. next? You know what I mean? And that's what I worry about. And I really wish the people that go to Miami for spring break would have kept it together so we don't have this because this right. will set a precedence. Now after mm -hmm. this. We'll be like, oh, let's That's cancel right. any other big black gatherings, you know, that we and I'm with, and, you know. yeah, yeah, and I grew up with Freak Nick and I loved it. It was so yeah. fun. And I can only imagine like some white folks might not like it this time of year. That's when the Negroes come to our city. Mm. Let's just say we had so many issues last year. But on the flip side, I remember being in spring break 20 some years ago and right in front of my hotel. Someone got shot and murdered right there. Yeah. And I, I haven't gone back since the spring break. So it's like, uh, unfortunately, Black Greek Week. Yeah, there's, there's also that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. It's unfortunate that y'all heathens did not know how to behave and now you're losing spring break. I'm glad I went when I went. All right. So coming up, Risa Tease's ex-husband is on the internet defending his ways. Keep it locked. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome our special guest host, T.S. Madison. Hey, y'all. Hey, soulmates. Y'all still my friend? T.G.I.F. You make me giggle like a schoolgirl. Live and interactive. Y'all been flirting all week, and it has not gone unnoticed by the soulmate. So might <laughs> there be a little carryover after this a little situation? On Fox Soul. I will go visit Al wherever he is. He can take me out to dinner, and he can pay for my babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. And you always want the next generation to have something better than what you had.
Welcome back to the show. Hey, after Risa Tisa's video series, Who the Bleep Did I Marry, went viral, her ex-husband is taking the stage to defend some of his actions. Her ex attempts to clear the air about why he never followed through on his offer to buy her a new uh, BMW. Well, they were married. Take a look. You got to work for it. You know, I'm not going to just give you an $80,000 car because I'm your husband and, and you deserve it. I understand that part, but you got to learn the value of a buck. You can't, we just can't go out here all the time. You got to understand the value of something and then you, you don't want to work for it. His chain is just giving me all kinds of struggle vibes. I cannot with that. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, Al? Um, listen, it makes sense to me. Listen, his, his, his ex-wife just signed with the largest uh, entertainment talent agency in the world. She got 400 million impressions um, from this video. Um, the likes of Oprah signed to CAA, right? Uh, I, he should step in the chat. Maybe he can get a little little flow overflow and 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 get some of this action. Well, I will say this though: the more he talks, the more her stock is going to go down, right? Because the the point of view was that she was used, and so the more he explains, the more her value of what her brand is and what she's explaining is going to go down. So she better hurry up because you know it's only going to be a little time for her to take advantage of this virality. Okay, uh, Armand, what do you think? Uh, I think that he should have probably tried to get with his own production company and try to find a way to combat this a little bit more polished and professional. I think um, him doing it like this is not going to end well for him. It's not going to make him any money and people aren't going to take him seriously. He should have got quiet and got with a production company and did his own series. Mm, that's good advice. You know, he ain't he ain't worth a damn because even his ex, his ex-wife. <laughs> yeah. You know why? His, his I don't know him. Right. But even his family is saying he's a pathological liar. And usually, mm. especially black men, they family be going to the grave. They be going, mm. you know, hard for them and their their sons, especially. And you know, they can't do any wrong. But the ex, uh, you know, his 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 ex wife and his own family says stay away from him, and he's a pathological liar. That's what actress Twenty Nine Austin said. And uh, Atlas Fountainhead said, "Oh my God, he is the big back." And mm. and so mm. DeAndre said, "I'm sorry, I feel bad. Uh, Risa went through this." But this man never was giving VP. He screams broke. I, no, I agree. Yes, God. I agree. But you know what? You believe things when you think you like someone. Like, unfortunately, we've all been suckers. All he right, seems well, like a fast talker. Go ahead. He, he does. Yeah, he does. While accepting his uh, African-American Film Critics Association Award, Jamie Foxx had some words to say about whether or not he's black enough. Take a look. You got to work. This a white girl. That's Jamie. <laughs> All right, what do you have to say about this, Al? Please don't have me say what I have to say. <laughs> oh gosh, I've always I've always admired this man. I'm sorry. It, it was just corny and tacky to me. I, I didn't like it. It didn't make me laugh. I I Sorry, let's go to Armand for better commentary than me. On no, this. I mean, I mean, what did you expect? I mean, they said, you know, you let a white, you, you know, that's him. He didn't think he was going to get the award. I mean, but there's some truth to that, right? Because uh, let's just be honest, you know, black people don't like to see or black women don't like to see black men with white women a lot of the time. And so there's a stigma with that. And they feel as though, you know, if you see a black man with any other woman that's not black, then it's, you know, you are not as black or you don't love your community. So he felt like he shouldn't have been, he may have not got the reward because, you know, he has that stigma around him that he likes white women. I mean, that's just what it is. Okay. I'm glad he's like leaning into it and just accepting it and claiming for what it is. Cause it's no, it's no secret that Jamie, you know, he definitely likes some ladies and he definitely has been seen with a white woman or two. So, I mean, he's a comedian, so you're supposed to make light of your life, <laughs> I guess, you know? I have always, uh, you know, I used to tell him this when I used to work with him, like, I, like, why can't I see you with, like, a Halle Berry or someone, like, on that caliber? And, like, it would be nice to see he's such an accomplished and talented star. Like, I would love to see him with his equal, but a lot of times men don't want to be with an equal like that. They want someone that doesn't really compete with their shine. Well, so. and Katie Holmes is equal. She's just as no, successful. No, I don't think so. Not Really? 
Think you know, but a lot of right. times they see more value. Like, you know, when black men or, you know, they, they get money and success, they feel like a white woman adds to their social value, their social media, uh, their social media. So I don't know. It, it seems like to have a nice porcelain princess next to your, you know, along with your career, you've now made it. You are the American dream now. I think this is trauma for him, you know, when he was younger and he lived in Terrell, Texas, he definitely was made fun of by white people and they called him ugly and all that kind of stuff. And then when he got rich and successful, I kind of think you want the thing that didn't want you early on. I think that's a, a case with him. Curvy Jersey K says, what black woman did Jamie date? <laughs> There's probably one out there. I want to thank my co-hosts, Al Reynolds and Armand Wiggins for joining me tonight. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Paging Dr. Shonda. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye, boys. Bye, fellas. <laughs> Bye, men. All right, so mates, y'all have a, have a good, good night. <laughs>